How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can use app storage to save simple data in our application and this is very similar to using user defaults except it's much much simpler. So to demonstrate we're going to be creating an app like this where you can click on a button and it will increment it and we'll leave it at 10 and you can also go ahead and type in something such as a sample note. Now if we just wait a moment and we close the application we can go ahead and reopen it and you're going to notice that all the data will persist. And that was simple, we didn't have to click any buttons, we didn't have to do anything, it just saved it automatically. And let's jump right into it because it's a very simple tutorial and you will love this, guaranteed. So the very first thing we have to do is create an at state private var of text, which will be set to nothing initially. Then we need to go ahead and use a new keyword called app storage. And this is just going to call user defaults under the hood with a simple property wrapper. And inside here, you just need to provide a key. And this is the same as specifying a key in user defaults. So go ahead and call it something descriptive, such as string key. Then go ahead and type in var, save text, or whatever you want to name your variable. And initially, it's going to be set to nothing. And we're going to do the same thing for the number. So at app storage, except this time we'll type in number underscore key with a variable of counter set to zero initially. Now with that being done, we can go ahead and replace this with a V stack and we're going to add some padding immediately so I don't forget about that. And the first one we'll take care of is the counter. So in here we're going to do quotation marks, backslash and insert the counter and we're going to give it a font of dot system, size, weight, and design. Size will be set to 100, weight will be set to dot bold, and design will be set to dot serif. And I made a very simple typo over here. So let's go ahead and fix that. Then we can continue down here and give it a foreground color of dot red, followed by an on tap gesture, which is going to increment the counter by one each time we tap on it. So what we're doing here actually is really cool because all we have to do is change this value for it to call save. So it's going to save it automatically into this part right here. So we can go ahead and run this program immediately. And you'll notice that as soon as we increment this counter to let's say six, it's going to save it. And in fact, if we go ahead and reopen this app, we can go ahead and notice that there's going to be a six still there. And this also works, of course, with the text. So go ahead and create a text field with a default value of type something. And it's going to be bound to the state variable of text. Then we want to give it some styling. So, so dot text field style dot rounded border followed by dot font dot title. So it's a bit bigger and we need to go ahead and disable autocorrection. So we can just type whatever we want. Then we're going to create an on change listener, which is going to look at text and each time it changes, it's going to update our current code. So let's delete the perform and create a closure. And each time we type a letter, we're going to type in self dot save text is going to equal the current text. So we're just going to assign the current text to the save text. So whenever the user finishes, we're just going to have that text in the end. And I completely forgot to write text in. And finally, we need to create an on appear. So for on appear, we just go ahead and open this closure and self.text is going to equal saved text. So it's going to appear inside our text editor and we're just going to print that we loaded the text. So loaded backslash and here we are going to add the save text. So we can see in the console what we loaded. And finally, I'm going to add a spacer so everything gets pushed to the top so we can see it. Now, if we go ahead and rerun that application, we're going to notice that the six will still persist, but we can also type something here. So we can say, this will be saved. And each time this text updates, it's going to call automatically the save function in user defaults. So it's going to update live. And let's go ahead and close that and do this once again, and you'll notice the data is still there. And yeah, that's essentially how you use app storage. It's just a very simple wrapper that you can put directly inside your views 
that does all the saving and loading automatically. You just have to tell the program where you want to display it and where it gets updated and how you want to update it. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.